Hello, today's session is going to be on cooperative learning strategy. The content outline for today's session is what is cooperative learning strategy, elements of cooperative learning strategy and advantages and limitations of cooperative learning strategy. After this session, you will be able to explain what is cooperative learning strategy. You will be in a position to enlist the elements required to create a cooperative learning environment. You will also be able to enlist the advantages and limitations of cooperative learning strategy. In a classroom, learning goals can be structured in three different ways, competitively, individualistically and cooperatively. Competitive learning goals are achieved by an individual when he or she is successful and the other fails. Basically, in this kind of learning goal, the entire environment is that of negative interdependence. It's a situation where I swim, you sink or you sink and I swim. In competitive learning goal, the winner is rewarded. And it is a situation where every individual achieves his or her own learning goal. In an individualistic learning goal, there is absolutely no relation between the individual's learning goal and the learning goal of the entire classroom. This is a situation of no interdependence and each one is individual in his own achievement of the goal. The individual is rewarded for his or her own achievement of the goal. But in a cooperative learning environment, it's a situation of we classroom where we all swim or sink together. There is absolute interdependence on each other and every individual may he or she be an individual or working in a group is rewarded for the achievement of the goal. Hence, the goal is not individual, but the goal is that of a group. So it's a group goal that every member of the group needs to achieve and each and every member is rewarded for the achievement of that goal. Okay, so then let us see what exactly is cooperative learning. It is said we learn 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we both see and hear, 70% of what is discussed with others, 80% of what we experience personally and 95% of what we teach someone else. Today, we speak so much about cooperative learning and there are n number of researches being conducted on cooperative learning. But then, why is cooperative learning strategy of such importance in our society? In today's environment, our expectations from the employee has completely changed. We want our employees to be able to work in a team, to be able to acknowledge the views of other people, do creative thinking, develop leadership qualities and also that of followership, indulge in problem solving and also have interpersonal skills. According to Fortune 500 companies, the top skills sought by employers today is interpersonal skills, problem solving and teamwork. Cooperative learning is an instructional approach where students work in small groups. They work towards maximizing their own learning as well as the learning of the fellow members of the group. In a cooperative learning environment, the class members are divided into smaller groups by the teacher. The teacher assigns learning goals and the students collectively work towards the learning goals by helping each other to achieve those goals. The teacher may provide some kind of learning material to the group. The group members make an attempt to understand the learning material themselves. They also assist each other to understand the learning material and hence achieve the learning goal. 
at times they might motivate and encourage fellow participants to take up difficult tasks and complete that task in an effective and efficient manner. In a cooperative learning environment, there are certain principles that are functional. Your success benefits me and my success benefits you. We all sink or swim together. The cooperative learning strategy transforms the I classrooms to V classrooms. Even though teachers, researchers and educationists are talking about the effectiveness of cooperative learning strategy today, but cooperative learning is not really a new strategy. At the same time, it is not a magic. At the same time, it is not something that should be used all the time while teaching in the classroom. Also, what cooperative learning is not, usually by itself, it can be combined with other strategies. It is not simple as it sounds. Also, it's not easy for teachers or for workshop leaders. Cooperative learning is something that we may not switch to all at once. It is not mainly about group learning and of course it is not a fad. Cooperative learning is something that is not just for students or not just something that can work with a small classroom group. Let us look at different dimensions of cooperative learning. The first very significant dimension is the group size. Also along with group size the group composition is of extreme importance. The teacher while using cooperative learning strategy in a classroom should keep in mind that a group should consist of four to six members. At the same time there, is, there are several debates on whether the teacher should select the group members. This decision the teacher can take in the classroom and decide whether she wants to select and assign the group members or at times the teacher can give the freedom to the students to select their group members. The second significant dimension of cooperative learning is the sitting arrangement. The sitting arrangement should be such that all the members of a group should be able to look at each other and also should be in a position to listen to each other. The third dimension of cooperative learning are the collaborative skills. One cannot assume that the students already would have these skills. The teacher needs to conduct several sessions where she can train the students to listen to each other, to appreciate each other and motivate each other. The teacher needs to take efforts to find out what collaborative skills that a student possess and train them accordingly so that the students use it effectively during the group work. Alright, then what are the different collaborative skills that the students need to develop? Encouraging others to participate, asking for help, thanking others who give help, making suggestions and even disagreeing could be the variety of collaborative skills that a teacher can help the students to develop. Besides, checking that others understand, asking for reasons, praising others, listening attentively, speaking quietly in the groups are some of the collaborative skills that a teacher needs to help the child to develop. The fourth significant dimension of cooperative learning is the duration of the group. How long should the group remain together or what happens to the group? after the cooperative learning activity is over. The teacher or the facilitator of cooperative learning strategy can take a call on how the group will function even after the activity is done. The teacher can help to plan out activities outside the classroom walls so that the group remains together and functions together. In this way, the students learn to be together even outside the classroom. While structuring a cooperative learning environment, there are five key elements that are essential to be structured within the classroom. Positive interdependence, individual accountability, face-to-face -face interaction, direct instruction of social skills 
and processing. Let's have a look at this one by one. In order to structure positive interdependence in a cooperative learning environment, it is essential that the teacher has to plan in advance to create an environment of interdependence. One depends on the other for its success should be the message from the teacher. The teacher needs to motivate every group member to help each other. How will the teacher do this? The teacher can structure positive interdependence by ensuring that there is one set of answer for the task that the students have to do. Or there could be the same grade given to all members of the group or bonus points for helping out and assisting each other to achieve the goal. These could be some of the ways that a teacher can ensure positive interdependence in the cooperative learning environment. Students must feel that they need each other in order to complete the group task and then and then only we can have positive interdependence. Positive interdependence can be established by having mutual goals, joint rewards, shared materials and information and by assigning definite roles to the students. The second key element that needs to be structured in a cooperative learning environment is individual accountability. Even though cooperative learning environment encourages group goals but individual achievement is equally important. Hence, the message from the teacher needs to be that every individual has to achieve his or her goal, has to complete his or her task and is responsible for his own learning as well as the learning of the entire group. How can a teacher ensure that there is individual accountability? She can call randomly any member of the group to give answers or she can do a spot testing of the students understanding of the content that is given to the group. The third significant element that a teacher needs to structure in a cooperative learning environment is face-to-face -face interaction. The teacher needs to convey to the students that they need to work together as a group and in a synchronous manner. For this, the teacher has to ensure that all the group members can maintain an eye contact with each other. She needs to also ensure that there are no groups formed within the larger group that is formed by her. The teacher can provide designated areas where the groups can sit together and work. The different groups in the classroom should be placed in such a way that the teacher is able to move freely from one group to another group. The placement of the groups in the classroom should be such that the group members can work and talk with each other without disturbing the other groups of the classroom. The message that a teacher needs to convey to the group members is stay with the group unless and until told otherwise. The fourth key element that a teacher needs to keep in mind while structuring a cooperative learning environment is direct instruction for social skills. The teacher needs to take efforts to develop the social skills in the students. She needs to convey the significance of these social skills. The teacher needs to ensure that she frames rules for social skills. The social skills need to be viewed positively by the students and for this the teacher can make use of a variety of techniques. For example, she can use role play and help the students to realize what they feel when they are listened to and what they feel when they are ignored. Or the teacher can ask the students to reflect upon a situation when they were listened to and what they felt when they were listened to. The fifth key element that a teacher needs to structure in a cooperative learning environment is processing. Students are working individually and they are working individually in a group and at times they are working in the group. There could be situations where certain individual behavior could be obstructive, would not help other members to achieve their goals or 
at times there could be group behavior which could be encouraging motivating helping all the fellow members to achieve their goals during processing the teacher can urge the students to reflect upon the situations which help them to perform better and achieve their goals at the same time the teacher can help the students to reflect upon those instances where the students could not perform better and were disturbed and distracted by certain group behavior by making such kind of identification about obstructive as well as those group behavior which were motivating encouraging will help every member to realize how their behavior has helped in the achievement of the group goals in spite of structuring all the five key elements in a cooperative learning environment the teacher can still encounter problem with groups these problems also become the limitations of cooperative learning strategy the teacher can encounter problem with the groups such as free loading for example in a free loading situation some members would take the initiative to complete the task whereas other members would take a back seat and not do the task that they are assigned but one finds that the other members of the group complete the task in order to achieve the goal and hence every member takes the benefit of the work done by few members of the group also there could be a situation of takeover which could become the another major problem of cooperative learning strategy takeover may happen when there could be a dominant group member who would not let any other group member to do any kind of task this could also bring about the third problem of the group that is arguing all the members of the group would argue with each other and would want their own points to come into existence socializing could be another problem that could be faced while functioning in a cooperative learning environment the teacher may assume that the students are well equipped with social skills but it may not be so hence the teacher needs to do a need analysis and find out what are the social skills that are lacking in the students and train them accordingly social skills play a very significant role in ensuring effective implementation of cooperative learning strategy in a cooperative learning strategy crowd control could be another problem that could be encountered with the group especially if the teacher is going to be using this strategy with large groups controlling the smaller groups could be a challenge for the teacher at this junction she can enlist the help of other teachers in order to facilitate classroom environment many times the indian classrooms may not have furniture that could be movable in a cooperative learning strategy the sitting arrangement is of great significance it is essential to ensure that a group members face each other and are able to listen to each other for this the furniture would need to be rearranged here the teacher can make arrangements in a different room where she can take the entire class such kind of rooms where there could be appropriate sitting arrangement at times she can take the help of the students to organize the furniture so that every member of the group can be seated in a perfect circle and can have an opportunity to look at each other and to listen to each other when functioning in a group the group members could actually be doing the task that is not assigned by the teacher that means the group members may be off task but they may give the appearance of being on task here the teacher needs to be extremely vigilant and move around in the groups and lend her ears and check out what is being said in the groups at times the teacher may feel that the group members are aware of how they need to work what needs to be done in order to complete the group task but 
the ignorance of the children may be an obstacle in effective functioning of cooperative learning strategy. Implementation of cooperative learning strategy takes time and hence the teacher may not be able to complete large chunks of portion. Rather, the syllabus may not receive due coverage. Hence, the teacher can decide at what junction she would like to use cooperative learning strategy for which topics and how much content can be covered up by using cooperative learning strategy. Assessment can be a major issue in cooperative learning environment. The individual is working in the group and also individually. Teacher needs to use formative as well as summative assessment in order to check the achievement of the students. For this, the teacher can make use of individual tests at the same time rate the individual based on the group grades that has been achieved by all the members of the group. There are several advantages of cooperative learning strategy. To enlist a few, cooperative learning strategy develops higher level thinking skills. It helps to promote student-faculty interaction and familiarity. This may not be possible in a lecture method environment. Since the students are learning themselves as well as they are ensuring the learning of other students, cooperative learning strategy helps to increase student retention. It helps to build self-esteem with the students because the students are not just involved in teaching themselves but they also teach others. Students experience enhanced satisfaction with the entire learning experience. They also develop a positive attitude towards the subject matter as the varied cooperative learning strategies help them to master the subject in a better manner. Cooperative learning strategy insist on every individual expressing themselves thus helping the students to develop oral communication skills. Students need to express themselves at the same time need to listen to each other and hence social interaction skills are also effectively developed. Cooperative learning environment creates an environment of active, involved and exploratory learning for the students. It enhances student responsibility for learning. They are responsible not just for their own learning but also the learning of their group members. Cooperative learning strategies ensures that the students are involved in every aspect of class procedure. It stimulates critical thinking and helps students to clarify ideas through discussion and debate. Cooperative learning strategies ensures that different group members are given different tasks which they need to manage within the specified time. Hence, it helps in enhancing self-management skills of the students. Teacher can use a variety of assessment techniques, both formative as well as summative. The entire environment is of give and take and hence cooperative learning develops a positive attitude towards teachers, principals and other school personnel by the students. It creates a more positive attitude in the teachers towards their students. It promotes innovation in teaching as well as classroom techniques. Researchers have found that classroom anxiety is significantly reduced when cooperative learning strategy is used. So also, test anxiety is significantly reduced. Classroom resembles a real life social and employment situations where the learners learn to function in a team. Cooperative learning activities can be used to personalize large lecture classes in an extremely effective manner. So, we have looked at what is cooperative learning. We have also seen the key elements that are essential in a cooperative learning environment and we have also looked at the limitations and advantages of cooperative learning. It is important to remember here that there has to be a healthy balance of cooperative learning whole class learning and independent learning. Many a times we find in our classrooms a situation like this where direct 
teaching is considered to be learning. But today, the classroom is not about knowledge acquisition, but the classroom is that of knowledge construction. And the students in the classroom are knowledge constructors. Hence, in a cooperative learning environment, we find a scenario where every person is teaching each other. A scenario like this, where every individual is a learning partner, including the teacher. One doesn't really know who is the mentor and who is the learner. Every learner takes the role of the mentor as well as that of the learner. And this is how learners then construct their knowledge in a cooperative learning environment. To conclude, it is said, what children can do together today, they can do alone tomorrow. While using cooperative learning structure, it is essential to remember a few tips. Remember to start small, introduce the technique well, structure the time limit and transition use so that the discussion can move smoothly. Structure the cooperative learning activities in such a way so that students must learn something. To conclude, we have seen that cooperative learning strategy is an approach that can be used for the purpose of teaching as well as learning. Cooperative learning strategy has five significant elements which can be structured with the help of different procedures. Researchers have identified more than 80 different techniques of cooperative learning. Each can be adopted and adapted as per the requirements of the classroom, as per the requirements of the student population, as per the content and the grades at which a teacher would be employing cooperative learning strategy. At the same time, it is important to remember that every content cannot be dealt effectively with cooperative learning strategy. A teacher has to make a judicious decision about when, how and why she will be making use of cooperative learning strategy.